What's up guys, how's it going? What are y'all up to? How you been? It's been a week since I posted a video and I just wanted to say something real fast. I've been really feeling like I should really do these videos uh, more often, uh, like once a week at least. And guys really put it on my heart to do this um, because it's, it's kind of a good hobby, but it also is good for, for me to always have something prepared uh, as far as something to minister to, to people, our disciples and stuff like that. But it's also a really good way for me to share with you guys um, what God has been showing to me and also to show uh, kind of what we're doing here in Brazil and a little bit of the life of a missionary. I'm sorry, I really can't show too much because it's just, that would take way too much time. Um, but this I can share and so I'm happy to do that and I really uh, love all you guys and uh, I, I pray for this channel and everybody who watches it. I hope that this is something that is useful to you guys but that you don't take it as something as in the only thing that you need because um, we need to read the Word of God as if it were food, <laughs> daily bread. And I don't know about you guys but I can't pass hardly six hours without getting hungry and that's how it should be with the Word of God as well. That we're always just wanting more and more and more. Um, because that's one way of God communicating to us. Um, and prayer also is extremely important. And so um, I, I just really love you guys and I really want you to know that. And know that I will continue uh, doing my best to kind of uh, make these videos more of a priority. And so. Um, I'm going to start by, by saying a little prayer before we get going. So let's bow our heads and pray. <laughs> Dear Lord, I thank you so much, Father, for, for this day, Lord. And Father, I thank you for showing me the things that, that you want me to talk about today, Lord God, and, and ministering this over my heart, Lord, that, that you can use me as an instrument in this day, Lord. And Father, I thank you so much for for everything that uh, you're, you're going to do this week, Lord God, I pray, Lord, that you would protect everybody who's, who is watching this channel, Lord God, and protect me as well, Lord God, that, that we can truly be um, in your presence this week, Lord God, and truly uh, feel, your, feel your love around us at all times, Lord God. And Father, I pray that we would have a, a sensitive heart, Lord God, so that we can truly hear and understand what you're telling us, Lord. In your name I pray, amen. All right, so I'm here at a park right now, and uh, I've never actually been here before, but it's a little bit interesting. It was a park, I guess I should say, but right now it's kind of run down. It's, uh, it's been a while, it looks like, since anybody's really done anything to improve this place, and but there's been a lot of destruction. It's interesting because this lesson was really uh, spoken to me by God, uh, this week and it has a lot to do with this place I was gonna go to another place but I didn't I decided not to so anyways I want to read a little bit from uh, Zechariah 12 through let's see sorry Zechariah 12 verses 1 through 4 it says a prophecy the word of the Lord concerning Israel the Lord who stretches out the heavens, who lays the foundation of the earth, and who forms the human spirit within a person, declares, I am going to make Jerusalem a cup that sends all the surrounding peoples reeling. Judah will be besieged as well as Jerusalem. On that day, when all the nations of the earth are gathered against her, I will make Jerusalem an immovable rock for all the nations. All who try to move it will injure themselves. On that day, I will strike every horse with panic and its rider with madness, declares the Lord. I will keep a watchful eye over Judah, but I will blind the horses of the nations. That's Zechariah 12, 1 through 4. And so what it's talking about there, as we can see in Galatians uh, 4, 25 and 26 it talks about how the new Jerusalem um, is us all who accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and admit that he is God and so uh, that is what the new Jerusalem is and uh, so he's not referring 
to the old Jerusalem, but the new Jerusalem, the Jerusalem to come at the time this was written. And so he's saying that uh, he will make, God will make the new Jerusalem like a rock um, that is immovable, a rock that uh, when you try to move it, you will injure yourself. And so I don't know if you guys know the injury hernia, but uh, luckily I've never had it. I like to weight lift, but it's very common for weightlifters because they try to lift something that's too heavy for their abilities and they, they end up hurting themselves. And that's the same concept as is written, is that we are uh, not able to move this rock. It's immovable because of the power of God. And so um, I want to talk about that today and how, how that relates with with us and how that is important to us because as you as you saw um, it says in the beginning of that passage I think it's I think it's actually verse two or three um, says let's see where's that um, I am going to make Jerusalem a cup that sends the surrounding peoples reeling basically uh, other versions of that say uh, that he will make it a cup of wine, a glass of wine, that when other nations drink it, they will get drunk and stumble. Um, and that's, I, to me, a bit of, I don't know why I didn't use that version. <laughs> and so then it goes right into to where he talks about um, Jerusalem being a immovable rock for all nations. All who try to move it will injure themselves. And he's going to make Jerusalem um, the, the Incredibles. He's going to make them uh, invincible. And, or us, I guess you could say, if you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Uh, us, in, immovable, indestructible, um, because we are eternal and we have the power of God living inside of us, the Holy Spirit. And that is the power that raised Jesus from the dead, that resurrected Jesus. And so, God is so good and He's so powerful and He wants us to realize these things. That's why it's written in the Bible. And so these things are super important for us to understand and I wanted to relate that then to um, Romans 7, uh, 7 through 12. It says, What shall we say then? Is the law sinful? Certainly not. Nevertheless, I would not know what sin was had it not been for the law. For I would not have known what coveting really was if the law had not said, You shall not covet. But sin, ceasing the opportunity afforded by, a command, by the commandment, produced in me every kind of coveting apart from the law. Sin was dead. And uh, it goes on and says, Once I was alive apart from the law, but when the commandment came, sin sprang to life and I died. I found that the very commandment that was intended to bring life actually brought death. For sin, ceasing... The opportunity afforded by the commandment deceived me and through the commandment put me to death. So then the law is holy and the commandment is holy, righteous, and good. So uh, what Paul is saying there, he didn't know uh, what sin was and so he didn't know that coveting was sin and uh, or any of the Ten Commandments except for maybe murder. <laughs> That's just morals. But then once he found out what sin was, um, he became dead because he knew that uh, he's, he's bankrupt. He doesn't have any way of becoming righteous um, because he's sinful. And that is how it is. That's just the reality of it. We're not righteous. We're incapable of being righteous. But through Jesus Christ, we are justified uh, through His blood. And He was the one that was worthy, and He is the one that freed us for eternity, if we accept Him as our Lord and Savior. And so, um, these are the things that are extremely important, because as we just heard, um, it's the sin that, that leads us to destruction, but it's Jesus who frees us from destruction. And um, I don't know if you want to be the one that gets injured when you try to move the rock, or if you just want to be the rock. I mean, it's up to you, but... But I would rather just be the rock who, who is impossible to move and is unshakable because of God's great power in you through the Holy Spirit. And so this is our choice that we need to make now because we don't know uh, when the time is going to come. Um, there's, there's things that are happening in this world that are a little bit um, eerie because of everything that's been, been prophesied and everything like that. It's all just kind of... 
Um, everybody thinks the world's gonna end really soon, which it might. Who knows? It could end today. By the end of the, by the time I'm done recording this video, it could end. I don't know. But there's one thing that I do know, and that is that if we are based in Jesus, if we love Jesus as our Lord and Savior, and we abide in Him as He is the one true Savior, and if we have faith in that, true faith, then we don't have anything to worry about, and we can actually serve God and, and, and be a light in this world. So, so that is what we're called to do as Christians, and there's two major commandments in the Bible, and I know that everybody disagrees with everybody, but there's, I want to say this, so please listen. It says that, uh, that after being asked by the Pharisees that, he was, that Jesus was, was trying to be, that they were trying to test Jesus, and so they asked him, what is the greatest commandment? And Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. After you do those things, all the commandments follow that. There is no commandment, there is nothing that is faulting after that. If you love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself, you are free of the law. You are following everything and you don't have anything to worry about. But that's not easy because we naturally are sinful people. We are not uh, good people naturally, and there's so many things that are beyond our, our ability to even imagine that we can't fully fathom and we can't fully follow the law. Plus, following the law doesn't justify us. We're not justified by the law. That just tells us that we're not guilty of murdering somebody, for example. Um, so those are all things that are super important for us to actually follow. And I know that you're probably thinking, well, I'll, I'll do that. But uh, not even Jesus said that he was good. He said that only God alone is good. And so we're still not justified by our works. We're justified by God because he is just, pure, and perfect. But we need to have our faith in God, in Jesus Christ, knowing that he is our savior and that we are justified by his blood and by his love. And so uh, there's things that we still just don't know. There's, there's things that we need to pray for, but we don't know how to pray for them. And there's things that, that we can't possibly fathom. And so all these are extremely important for back to where we started in that uh, in Zechariah 12, where it says um, that basically destruction will come um, but we, Jerusalem, will be unmovable. That is why all of this is so important. That's why people risk their lives for other people uh, to save them, to help lead them to Christ. Uh, there's people in persecuted countries where Christianity is illegal um, because they love their brother and their sister and their God with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength. And that is why they are being persecuted. That's why they're losing their lives for the lives of somebody else because they actually love them and I'm not saying that you need to do that to show love to somebody but I am saying that this is an extremely important um, topic and that this is not something that we can take lightly because it's our future whether you like it or not this is what we're going to end up with and so um, if you die today uh, where are you gonna go and what are you gonna do um, where are you going to go and who are you putting your faith in? Is it yourself? Is it God? Is it money? What is it? I want to share one more thing with you guys real fast. And that is uh, Romans 8, 26 and 27. And it says, In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through the wordless groans. And he searches our hearts and knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in the accordance of God's will. And so these are things that are just so important for us because if we're, if we're doing, if we're living, if we're, we're breathing, then there is a will that God has for your life and there is a will 
that is over everything and uh, he created you with a purpose and he wants you to be his follower his son his daughter and he wants to see you in heaven with him and that is why when jesus died he went to heaven and sent the holy spirit down to us to live in us as our holy helper as our uh what does it say counselor as our holy counselor because um the the god of the heavens is in a different realm than we're in here on earth there are we're in the physical world where we have physical flesh and ugly beards and he is in the holy world where he is above everything he created this realm and he is in another realm and so there are obviously different things that that matter uh, in that realm that are different than this realm and so uh, these are the reasons why God sent his holy advocate to us the Holy Spirit as our helper and guide um, so that we can understand uh, what we need to do here on earth and that we can have a chance in in doing the will of God because it is our job to help our brother and sister and that's why it says that to love your brother and sister as yourself is such an important thing um, because if we love them we're not going to sin against them we're not going to murder somebody we love is that right we're not going to rape somebody we love we're going to help them we're going to try to get the best that we possibly can for them and that is true love and that's the love that God has for us he wants the best that we can possibly have and that's why he gave us so many warnings the book the Bible is filled with warnings and it's also filled with answers and responses to what we can truly fully do um, to absolutely be saved and uh, I don't know about you guys but I don't want to doubt God and so that is why it is so important that we live on the straight and narrow and go where God calls us to go and do what God calls us to do and so I have one more thing that I really want to say and that is living on the straight and narrow is not easy it's not easy to live on one road and it's not easy to follow it until the end but there is one thing that is so good about that and that is eternal life we don't have anything to fear in this world because we have God on our side we are the immovable rock and if your faith is immovable there is nothing that could ever shake you uh, I recommend you guys read Psalms 15. It is such a good uh, good chapter, I guess, and it, it's like, I think, five uh, verses long. King David talks about that uh, way back when, before even this was written. And so uh, these things are super good to know and always good to meditate on. And I'm sharing this with you because I want you guys to know that we do have salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, and He is on your side. And... He wants the best for you, and so I just really pray that we could all have a sensitive heart that can actually hear and pay attention to what God is telling us, because I guarantee you that He has something to tell you every single day, um, whether it's through reading the Bible or through prayer. The Bible says that, that He really wants to connect with us. He wants our relationship. He's an extrovert. He has to be. God is. God has to be an extrovert. I just don't see any other way because He's always there. If you if you say a prayer, call Him up. For example, <laughs> um, I'm just going to use that as a worldly example. Obviously, I don't. I mean, unless you have God's phone number, I would love to have it. But He never says, "Oh." Hey, call me back in the morning. I'll, I'll answer in the morning. Yeah, just leave a message. No, he's always right there, ready to respond uh, to your prayers. And you are the one that needs to initiate that phone call, that prayer, that, that time reading the Bible. Separate some time for God, and he'll separate some time for you. So this weekend was super awesome. Uh, we had a family visit from, from the States on their way to Ecuador. The Tibbs, um, I don't know if you guys know, I'm with uh, Ardeo Global, and uh, Brian Tibbs is the one who, uh, who started this organization. And so Brad is his brother, and Janelle is his wife, Brad's wife. And they came to uh, Brazil to visit us for a few days. Something really exciting happened, and that was that our disciples got baptized and 
Uh, so everybody who went to the last two encounters that wanted to get baptized was finally able to do that. And whew, I'm winded. So that was an amazing time. And that was, it was really a surreal experience um, because this whole thing with disciples and everything is uh, very time consuming and stressful, a little bit stressful and uh, just really a process and so to see them actually getting baptized was amazing it was one of the coolest things that has happened here um, to see our disciples getting baptized and see them truly giving their lives to Jesus and uh, so it was really an amazing thing and I think I'll do a, a devotion about baptism because it's really it's a good thing to know know about and uh, know why we do it and everything sorry I thought there was somebody out here but anyways um, it was super awesome and God is just so good he's doing amazing things here on this mission and uh, it's just so cool to, to see him working and uh, see him working in us and in the lives of other people and see the miracles happen right in front of our eyes and so uh, oh, whew, man I don't know if you guys can tell but that way down there is where I just came from and man alive Whew. that's a trek so anyways it was a super awesome time and I love that um, it's it's finally happened we got disciples baptized given to Jesus they're just oh it's so awesome and so uh, it's it's really encouraging to us to go out and make more disciples um, and fish for men. Fishing isn't amazing, but but uh, fishing for men is surreal and supernatural. It's clearly uh, just proves that it's not us who do the work, but it's God, and that is what is so amazing about it. And I love being able to be a part of it. It's like I said in my last devotion, the biggest opportunity that I've ever had, and. Um, it's my everyday life here and so I hope you guys have a great week and uh, feel free to hit that subscribe button I'm gonna try to do more videos like this one and I'm gonna try to get some better footage so that you guys don't have to watch terrible videos <laughs> have a great week and I'll see you on the next one